doing today is we're going to try something a little new and do an asynchronous trick learning um, and we're going to be watching these notes and then you'll have an opportunity to start your homework at the end. So I want you to follow along and take these notes as if uh, I was teaching them to you. And then at the end of the day what we're going to do is uh, have um, time to answer any questions. If something still doesn't make sense or you'd like me to go over in person, okay? So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is start with the warm-up. So everyone have uh, 1.5 um, and that is on page 17. Page 17. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here then. It says Elvira likes to likes the way matrices organize information so she can keep track of several computations simultaneously. She decides to apply these ideas to another sticky situation she often encounters in the lunchroom. Students' favorite dessert is cinnamon rolls, which they often refer to as sticky buns. However, not all students like their rolls with the cream cheese glaze, and some prefer, prefer rolls without raisins. Consequently, uh, Elvira has cooked has cooks to prepare cinnamon rolls in three different varieties. So basically, they're going to make three different types of cinnamon rolls, glazed, plain, and raisins. So. Organizing the following information to matrix is helpful. Label the rows and columns to show the number, uh, what the numbers represents. So one dozen plain cinnamon rolls required two pounds of dough. So let's go and break this down. We have plain, which is two pounds of dough, no glaze, no raisins. All right, so this is going to be my first type of cinnamon roll. Second one, it says one dozen glazed cinnamon rolls require one pound of dough. 0.5 pounds of cream cheese and 0.25 of raisins. And finally, the last one, it says one dozen uh, plain cinnamon rolls of raisins require 1.5 pounds of dough. This is plain cinnamon rolls with raisins. Okay, 0.25 raisins and no glaze. So that's my three thing pieces of information that we have here, okay? Um, so what we are going to do now is jump right into over here and what we're going to do is we're going to organize this information into matrix so in order to do that let's go ahead and um, uh, see this part right here so we're going to be doing this by labeling oops, right here, labeling my three pieces of information so the first thing that we have is we have three different rolls and three different ingredients so that's going to cause a three by three matrix so let's go ahead and start with the first one. I'm just going to label these here. So I have plain, and we're talking about pounds here. So we're going to have pounds. And then we have glazed, and the ingredients in pounds. And then finally raisins, and your ingredients are in pounds. So the next thing is our items. What kind of items did we have? Well, our three items that we had here, we had dough, we had glaze, we had raisins. So let's go ahead now and look at the first one. The first one was, um, da -da 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 -da. first one was I had two pounds of dough, zero ounces of glaze and, excuse me, pounds, zero pounds of glaze and zero pounds of raisins. The second one, I had one point, which is glazed, um, I had 1.5, I had one, sorry, I had 1.5 pounds of dough, I had 0.5 pounds of glaze and 0.25 pounds of raisins. And the last one is I had 1.75 pounds of dough, zero pounds of glaze, and a quarter pounds of dough. Okay? So those are my three different types there. Um, so this is my first matrix that I created. Now the second one, it says we are going to organize this the following information to a matrix. If helpful, label the rows and columns to show the number that represents. So I have two dates here. So October 31st, the cooks made 20 dozen plain cinnamon rolls and 30 dozen glazed cinnamon rolls. 
and 20 dozen plain cinnamon rolls with raisins. On November 20th, the cooks made 15 dozen plain cinnamon rolls, 40 dozen glazed cinnamon rolls, and 10 glazed cinnamon rolls. So I want you to realize I have two dates here. My two dates are, uh, let's see, October 31st and November 20th. And within those two dates, I had three different ingredients. So I just got to take some of this key information here. So 20 dozen plain cinnamon rolls, then I had 30 dozen glazed, and 20 dozen plain with raisins. Okay. Second piece of information on November 20th, I had 15 dozen cinnamon rolls, 20 glazed cinnamon rolls, and 10 plain cinnamon rolls. Okay. Um, what I want to do here, guys, is realize um, what is being repeated here. So is it the ingredients or the type of um, the type of what can I say this? Uh, the type of cinnamon roll. So what we're going to do now is if we look at the previous one, I had uh, the ingredients here. And then I had the type of cinnamon roll. That's, this was the first matrix that I made on number uh, one. Okay, so in the ingredients in pounds. Pounds, that's LBS, okay. Now here I have dates, what days I'm actually doing, and uh, the type of cinnamon roll. So glazed cinnamon roll, dozen cinnamon, uh, excuse me, um, um, glazed cinnamon rolls, um, plain cinnamon rolls, so on and so forth. So if you remember then, I always want, um, uh, I always want the ingredients and the amount or the cost and the amount on separate sides. So since on the previous matrix, I had the pounds on the left side, I want the, uh, the amount on top, okay? So let's go ahead now and actually look what this would look like for my second matrix. So we're gonna have date here. We're gonna have the dates. So that will be uh, October 31st. And then I'm gonna have November 20th. And so now I'm gonna have the amount of plain, the amount of glaze, and the amount of raisins. So let's go ahead on October 31st, I had 20 plain, 30 glaze, and 20 raisins. Or on November 20th, I had 15 dozen cinnamon rolls, 40 glazed, and 10 plain with raisins. Okay, so now I have just created my two matrices. And now it says, Let's go ahead and use the information to find the total amount of each ingredient. All right, so let's go ahead and show how we would solve this. So I'm gonna bring up my two matrices. Um, now remember, it, we're looking for the total amount of ingredients for October and November. So if you think about the, uh, the October date and the November date, and I have three ingredients. So that means I have two dates, three ingredients, so I'm gonna want a two by three or a three by two matrix. So our answer is gonna be a two by three or a three by two, depending on how we set up our matrices. Um, and remember, I have two dates, three ingredients, or three ingredients, two dates. It just depends how you set it up. So if I want to have my final answer, and we can just do it this way, we're gonna have a two by three, my October 31st, my November 20th, and then I'm going to have my three different uh, ingredients my uh, in, in pounds. So if I'm looking at my dough, my glaze, and my raisins, I'm just trying for you guys to realize this is my matrix. I have a two rows, three columns. So to, in order to get an answer of two rows and three columns, I'm going to take my three by three matrix, and I am going to put my two by three matrix to the left side. These match, this is my solution. So that kind of just helps you to figure out what am I actually looking for to uh, set up your matri matrices. So when I look at this, I'm gonna look at here. Um, I had um, 20, 30, 20, and these are my pounds for the first date of glaze, uh, or excuse me, dough, glaze, and raisins. Dough, glaze, and raisins on October's date. 
then on November's date, I had um, 15, 40, and 10. All right, so that's my first matrix. Now the second one, the second one here, I am going to have uh, the matrix I had on number one, okay? So then here, I'm just going to have 2, 1.5, 1.75, 0, 0.5, 0, and 0, 0.25, 0.25. So I have my two matrices. And so now what I'm going to do is figure out the values on what to plug in to get my 3x3 three three matrix. So I'm going to make a real big one right here. Okay, so when I go ahead and solve this now, Let's go ahead, we're going to do this color by color. So I am, I'll use a highlighter so it's easier to see for this first one. First row, first column. So this would be 20 times 2 plus 30 times 1.5 plus 20 times 1.75. And I'm going to make this a little tinier so it all fits. All right. So now let's go ahead now. I want this second spot. This second spot right here. First row. Excuse me. Second row. First column. That's going to be second row. First column. So right here, this would then be 15 times 2, 15 times 2, right there, plus 40, plus, uh, excuse me, 40 times 1.5, um, plus 10 times 1.75. All right. Now let's go ahead. We're going to look at, so we have three spots. We have first second and third column, okay? So now what we're going to do is look at column number two. So now we're going to have first row again, so this one in blue, and second column. So what that would look like, I'm going to go ahead and switch my colors up a little bit, uh, 20 times 0 plus 30 times 0. 0.5 plus 20 times um, let's see what I meant. Did it 20 ah, times zero? Okay, so then the next one it's going to be right here. It's going to be second row, middle column, second row, middle column. So 15 times zero plus 40 times zero, 40 times 0.5. Yeah, there you go, 40 times 0.5. And then we are going to have 10 times 0. So it's important to do your best to keep track of these values, just because what I was doing right there, I was trying to uh, go a little too fast, and I can easily lose spots, uh, your spots. So what I always do is I try to highlight these. So I'm in the second row, middle column. So I'm just matching up those corresponding values. Okay. So now what we're going to do, last one. So I'm going to do, let's see, we'll do this one in yellow. Top row. last column. Okay, so right here now guys, this is going to be 20 times 0 plus 30 times 0 0.25 plus 20 times 0 0.25. Okay, so let's go ahead now and do the very 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 last one. Let's see if I can find another color. I haven't used pink. We have this bottom row, last column. This is going to be 15 times 0 plus 40 times 1.25. Nope, times 0.25. plus 10 times 
So now what I'm going to do is just uh, figure out what all these values are and add them up. So right here, this is going to be 40 plus 45 plus 35 to have a final answer of 120. So my final matrix, 120. And then the next one, let's go ahead and we can do this next part right here. Um, this would be 30 plus 60 plus 17.5. Um, so when I add all those up together, I'm going to have 107.5. Um, okay, next one. This would be 0 plus 15 plus 0. So it's easy enough. It's just 15. Here I am going to have 0 plus 20 plus 0. So the value of just 20. And then in purple, my last one's 0 plus 7.5 plus 5, 4, plus 4, plus 5. All right, and that would give me a total of 12.5. Same idea, guys, here, 15 times 0, 0, plus 10, plus 2.5. So I have another 12.5. So what does all this represent, guys? So let's go ahead. This is going to represent October 31st date. This whole thing is October 31st. And this one right here is going to represent November 20th. And right here is going to be the uh, amount of dough in pounds. So this is our dough. This is our glaze. And this is our raisins. So now that I have this matrix, we can uh, go on to the next part. So it says Elvira would like to use a, uh, use matrices to determine the best way to purchase ingredients for days when she decides to serve cinnamon rolls. She has obtained the following information from the two local markets. If Elvira shops at Mainstream Market, her costs are $1.50. Uh, per pound, and her dough is two dollars per pound, and her ice cream uh, cheese glaze is five dollars per pound. Or excuse me, two dollars for uh, glaze and five dollars per pound for raisins. At Grandpa's Grocery, it's a dollar seventy-five per pound for dough, four dollars per pound for raisins, and two dollars and twenty-five cents per pound for uh, glaze. So it says use the information above of multiplication to find the total cost of purchasing the, t purchasing the two ingredients per store. So let's go ahead and look at this, guys. Um, first matrix, we have two dates. We have October 31st, we have November 20th, and then I have my pounds. Let me go ahead and move this down just a little bit. And then I have my pounds of dough. I have my pounds of glaze. I have my pounds of raisins. So this is the matrix we did in number three. So I had 120, 15, 12.5. Then I had 107.5, 20, and 12.5. So if you guys remember, when I uh, multiply these, I now am given a... Um, I am now given two grocery stores with three ingredients. Two grocery stores, three ingredients. So it looks like a two by three matrix. Now I know it's a two by three matrix and not a three by two matrix, because if you remember, um, excuse me, I know it's a three by two matrix and not a two by three matrix, because if you remember what I said with like money, for instance, the cost of peaches versus the amount of peaches, the cost per dough for pounds of dough, the um, cost per pencils for the amount of pencils. When you're multiplying two matrices, you always want them to be in opposite positions. Meaning on my first matrix, is if it's on top, I need it to be the side. If I made my, I'll just do this really quickly, if I made my matrix a three by two, the previous one, which you could have, and you had dough, glaze, and raisins, okay, so you had your matrix looking like this, as a three by two, you then would have to have this one as a two by three. So remember, they always need to be opposite places when you're multiplying them. 
So right here now, I'm going to have, um, what is the grocery store called? Uh, Main Street Market, and I'm going to have GPOS uh, Grocery. And now here, I'm going to have the cost of Glaze. I'm going to have the cost of, eh. I'm going to have the cost of Dough. I'm going to have the cost of Glaze. I'm going to have the cost of raisins. So right here, um, we can go ahead and use this information to figure it out, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and copy this information. Let's go ahead and move it to the next slide, okay? So let's go copy. Okay. Oops. So um, what information that it has, actually I saw on the previous one, is these values of right here, what I was looking for. The cost at the two places. So at Mainstream Market, let's go and look at Mainstream Market first. It's $1.50 for the dough uh, per pound, $2 for the glaze per pound, $5 per pound for the raisins. Um, over here at Grandpa's, we're going to have $1.75 um, for dough, $2.25 for glaze and four dollars for raisins. So now I have my second matrix. So what I'm going to do now is just multiply these two matrices together. I'm going to get rid of all, oops, I'm going to get rid of this part just so we can treat these as two things to multiply. Um, also really quickly guys, I have two stores on two different dates. So if I have two stores on two different dates, that looks like I'm going to have a solution of a two by two matrix. Uh, so that's one way to think about it logically, okay? So let's go ahead now and multiply these. I'm going to have a two by two matrix. So the first one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the price of um, dough, glaze, and raisins at the first store. Um, and then same thing, glaze, um, I'm going to figure out the cost of October 31st at the second store and the first store. And then I'm going to figure out the November 20th at the first store and then November 20th again at the second store. So that's just another way to organize our thoughts. So let's go and look at this. I'm going to do 120 times 1 1.5. So 120 times 1 1.5 plus 15 times 2 plus 12.5 times 5. Okay, so then the next one, what we're going to do here is I'm going to have uh, 107, so second row, first column, so 107.5 times 1.5, and then plus 20 times 2, and then plus 12.5 times 5. 12.5 times 5. Okay, so next thing, we basically just figured out, um, remember this is where the date was, October 31st. November uh, 22nd, I thought it was, and this is Mainstream Market. So we just basically uh, found all the values of what it's going to be um, both days at Mainstream Market. So now what we're going to do is each individual day at Grandpa's Grocery. So we can go ahead and do that in red now. So this would look like then 120 times 1.75. And then we do 120 times, or excuse me, 15 times 2.25, then I'm going to do 12.5 times 4. I made a mis... did I make... nope, no mistake, no mistake. Okay, now the next one is I'm going to look at November 22nd's date with Grandpa's grocery list. So let's go ahead now and do 107 times 1.75, then we're going to do 20 times 2.25, And then I'm going to do 12.5 times 4. Okay. So when I go ahead now and start to solve all of these, um, this would be, if I did all my calculations correct, guys, I'm going to have you guys try this on your own. But I believe this would be then 272.5. Um, this right here would be 263.75. This right here would be 
293.75. And then this final one would do 242.13. I believe it's 1.25 if you solved everything out, but you can't have a uh, three decimal place value for money. So that's what it would look like, okay? So next part is, if I just write this as a simplified matrix, so 272.5, 263.75, and then 293.75, and 242.13. So this should be your matrix. Remember, guys, this is total cost for all the ingredients on um, mainstream market. This is for Grandpa's Grocery. And over here, guys, this is, would be for October 31st, and this would be for November 22nd. Okay? So that's what that represents. So Vera is getting good at multiplying matrices, but realize that sometimes she only needs one element in the sum or product. For example, the cost of buying ingredients at Grandpa's Grocery uh, on a specific day, and so she would like to be able uh, to calculate a single result without completing the rest of the matrix operations. For the following matrix of operations, calculate the indicated missing element in the sum or product without calculating the rest of the individual element or sum of the product. So when I look at this, guys, um, adding and subtracting, if you remember from the warm-up, is quite simple. We just find the corresponding uh, part and add them together. So this would be uh, 5, this would be the 1, I would match this negative 2 with this 3, I would match this 3 with this 5, so on and so forth. So it wants me to find first row, third column, and that's what I just highlighted in yellow right here. So I want to take this 3 and add it to this 5 to get 8. And you're done. Um, same thing here now, it wants, go and choose a little different color, it wants this second row, third spot. There's second row, second column. So I go to second row, second column, second row, second column, and I add those together to get negative two. And then you're done. That's all it wants is those spots. All right, now this is uh, a little bit more, um, I wouldn't want to say tricky, but it really tests our knowledge of figuring out exactly what we are looking for. Um, so here we go. If I looked at this one, I am looking for the second row, second row, and second column. So my first matrix, remember I want second row and that's going to match with second column. Just as a quick reminder, here we go, if this is row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, this is column 1, column 2, column 3, and what it wants is it wants row two, column two. If that makes sense on how I did that. So then when I go ahead and solve these guys, uh, I'm just going to do four times negative three plus negative one times five. So then all you need to do, guys, is simplify that. And just give me one second to bring this up. So then what this is going to look like then is um, negative 12 minus 5, which equals negative 17. So that's that spot right there. Okay. So then um, I want to find this next spot. And if we look, that is in row 3. So I go 1, 2, 3, row 3, column 1, column 1. So then when I solve these, this will be 2 times 2 plus 5 times negative 1. This gives me 4 minus 5, or 4 plus negative 5, which is just negative 1. And then the final one, which I'll do in, little, in red, is 4th row, 3rd column. So this would be 4th row, 3rd column. So when I do that, it's just 1 times 4, 1 times 4, plus 3 times negative 2 which would give me 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. Okay. Um, dun, 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 dun. So, we did this problem specifically to identify how to figure out which missing values, if, I, if I'm looking for only a specific one. Okay. Um, 
Now not only can we add it and subtract, we can also um, multiply it by a coefficient up on the outside. So I basically use distributive property out here and I distribute it to each and everything on the inside. So this would then give me 6 minus 3 on the bottom, 12 and positive 15. And then I'm going to have this minus sign stay here. And I'm just going to go ahead and distribute all of those to give me 8, and then negative 12, negative 20, 16. Now all I do is subtract these corresponding values. Um, so I'm going to do 6 minus, oh, sorry, they're looking for specific values. Second, uh, first row, second column. So that would be this value right here. 12 minus negative 12 is 24. And right here, second row, first column, second row, first column. Um, since we're adding or subtracting, all we're doing is find the corresponding spots. So negative 3 minus negative 20 is negative 3 plus 20, which gives me positive 17. All right, so I want to be go into it a little bit more specifically. We kind of touched on this a few times, but what I want to do is enter the following examples into our handheld um, calculator. And we're not going to be using a calculator for this one, but I just want you to uh, realize if you were to solve these problems, um, you don't need a calculator, okay? So we won't actually be using a TI-83 calculator or any of that, but to solve it, all we do is add and subtract the corresponding values. So um, here's this first spot with this first spot, second with the second. You can just go through these and go third with the third, and then fourth with the fourth, okay? So when you do this, when I add these together, I would have three, five, five, and negative four. So two plus one is three, five plus zero is five, eight plus negative five, eight plus negative three is five, and negative 11 plus seven is negative four. And then you're done. So we can do the same thing here with subtraction. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 10 minus negative 5 is 15. 3 minus 9 is negative 6. And negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And then you're done. Now, if you were to plug these into a calculator, I want you to notice these. It's like, well, this is a little different matrix. You can't actually do that. So this is actually undefined can only add and subtract um, matrices when their dimensions are equivalent. So looking at this one, can't do it because it has this extra column here. It's not like you can just close it off and make that the problem. So right here, your answer is also undefined. Okay. So it says, when can uh, matrices be added or subtracted? It says when the dimensions are the same. And if you're on your notes and you're like, how is Mr. Jenkins getting all this stuff? Uh, we skipped all the calculator stuff and we just scrolled on down to number one, uh, just past the matrix stuff. So how does the error message help figure out the rule to add and subtract matrices? So basically what you should have done, or excuse me, what we could have done with a calculator is figured out every time we plug something in, what didn't have exactly the same dimensions, we'd get an error message. Um, so similar idea, what is the rule when adding and subtracting um, when is the rule? It's just basically the same as number two. You can only add and subtract the matrices all the same. Yay. Are the same dimension. Okay. So next part, multiplying matrices. So multiplying two matrices in the same manner as adding or subtracting, as you complete the examples, you should think about the dimensions in the two matrices multiplied together and the answers. So enter the following examples into our calculator. So these ones we're actually not gonna put into our calculator. Um, let me go ahead and double check which ones we're gonna do really quickly. Um, we're not going to solve these because we've solved, I, uh, I feel like, enough. 
what I want you guys to realize here, this is a two by two, this is a two by two. Could we solve this? Yes. Okay. This is a one by two. This is a two by one. And I could solve this. So this would get a yes. I want you to see how your problem would differ though. Here you would have a solution of a one by one. This is a short one, we can solve this. This would be one times negative one plus nine times negative four. This would give negative one plus negative 36. And this would give me an answer of negative 37. Whereas in here, this is a two by one. This is a one by two. When I did this, I would have a two by two answer, okay? So first row with first column, that's just negative six. There's that, I should say two times negative three, nothing else to add. So then let's go first row, second column, that's two times five, then seven times negative three, and then seven times five to have a final matrix of negative six, 10, negative 21, 35. That's your final answer there. All right, similar idea, you guys, you have two three by three matrices. I just want you to realize that you can multiply those. Um, what were the dimensions of the matrix that, sh that uh, could be multiplied? Um, so basically what it's asking here is, um, you always have a row times a column, and then you're gonna multiply that by a row times the column. So the dimensions are the ones that we could multiply uh, up above, whereas any time that the first matrix column, first matrix column, matched the second matrix row. So if the matrices could be multiplied, what were the dimensions of the result? Well, kind of what we just talked about already. Um, that would be, so what we've kind of been talking about. So really quickly, we can multiply these if these are the same, and the dimensions of the new matrix, if those, oops, sorry, didn't go too far enough, if these are the same. So what that would look like is when the um, first matrix row matches um, and second matrix column are the new would be the new dimensions So if A times B matrix is multiplied by a C and D matrix, what must be true uh, in order to get an answer? So it's basically trying to take all this and apply it together. So A times B um, times, or excuse me, A by B and C by D. So I know that B must equal C, okay? All right, so um, you guys have just finished the video. So two things, um, make sure after you do this, you upload. I know they're two different videos, but as one whole thing, upload 1.1, 1 .1, excuse me, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.5, sorry, 1.5 lesson. And then start on one point, uh, excuse me, RSG 1.5. And then if you have questions on anything from the homework or anything on the um, lesson, uh, what we can do then is please meet me from two to three. You don't have to stay for the whole thing. Um, and there'll be a additional meet in the stream. There'll be an additional link for the Google Hangout on the stream. Um, and don't forget, you should have watched the warm up before this. All right guys, have a great night.